This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem, it's the Ramble with me, I'm Alex Bennett, and we'll be here until, uh, I guess, midnight tonight, unless I pass out before then, because uh, I'm an old man and I, I, I don't know if I can last that long anymore. Anyway, it's time, uh, as we do every, uh, every um, uh, Tuesday, uh, to go to our uh, old friend, uh, who is? Uh, uh, let me see here if we can if we can bring him in here. We can dial him in. He's in. Uh, you're in where? Uh, what? I'm um, I'm in Denver. Uh, uh, move your move here? your camera so your head is up a little more into the uh, frame. Yeah, I'll have to hold the thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm in Denver. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this iPad is it's a little stranger on Zoom. I, I don't know exactly. Uh, what I'm doing with it, yeah, but well, it, yeah, you, but it, it's working, look right? Look into your camera. Uh, I don't even know where the camera is. <laughs> oh, it's in the uh, on the iPad. So, oh, it's off to the side. Yeah, that's why you're looking off to the side. Yeah, because that's where so, the camera is. You know? Well, uh, you know, uh, I this is my first time on a plane in what 17, 18 months. You don't look like you're on a plane. It looks like you're in a in an airport with a lot of fat women. Yeah. Well, I I, uh, I took that picture to show how people were social distancing at the airport. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, it was it was not a pretty picture. No, it doesn't uh, look like I, a pretty I, picture. I, I I also don't know how to take it off of this thing. It's not like the uh, Mac Pro. Well, but, you uh, should know how to take. You know how to get it on. Uh, I got it on before I said join with audio, I, or with video, and yeah. there was a button you could but press. Don't you have a thing on your iPad that allows you to go up and no change the it's, picture? No, it's not that. It's not that simple. Uh, but you know, iPads are a little stranger. Yeah. Anyway, is you know, it's a holiday today. Is that why Charlie hasn't? posted the count and the amount it's a holiday today yeah uh according to my ipad uh, the calendar says it's idiala dala ha ha all day long what, uh, what is and, it idiala ha 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 yeah e-i-d-a-l let me see if it comes uh, up um is that on your uh is that on your uh apple? it's on my it's on yeah it's on your the apple calendar, calendar? well let me know. yeah let me look at my I, Apple calendar. I can't, I can't get rid of the thing either. Uh, even when you turn off holidays, it's still there. No, I but the it just, just says I the interest. What? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, it says the exact day of this holiday is difficult to predict. It's just an approximation, 720. So, uh, 720? You know, yeah. This Today's is, the 20th, Oh, right? today is the 20th, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, some odd holiday, uh, E-I-D-A-L-D-H-A-A, uh, D, uh, uh, I'll, I'll be ha, ha. Really? <laughs> but uh, I, I figure that's why uh, Charlie took the night off. Oh, okay. All right. You know, I was looking for the count and the amount. Uh, so traveling is, is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting on the plane, mm -hmm. uh, I flew first class. And the reason why is that if you want the seats in main cabin that are a little bit larger, you mm -hmm. have to pay extra for every leg of the flight. Mm -hmm. So uh, 70 bucks, uh, d depending, on, depending on where you want to sit. So I had four legs. I had to go from San Francisco to Phoenix, from mm -hmm. Phoenix to Denver mm -hmm. and then Denver to Phoenix and back to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, so I figured it would have cost me, I don't know, 200 and something bucks. Uh, and then one of the legs, I couldn't even get the main cabin seat. So I had, a, I would have had to sit these little minuscule seats uh, with uh, three across 
and your knees are up in the wait 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 a minute wait a minute, wait a minute. you don't want to fly coach i assume i would prefer not to okay so you're flying what? i flew first class first class yeah why to and, denver you pussy uh, yeah well you know to uh, denver you're you, gonna waste money on first class yeah well uh you know they had they had snacks and uh, how much total I, did they charge you for first class to denver the total ticket was about nine hundred dollars really that's all yeah how much would it yeah. have been in coach uh 400 and something and then to get the or 300 and something and then to get those upgraded seats i would have been around 550 600 bucks no oh, well i guess the difference isn't that bad if you got first class but you know first class domestic is not as good as first class international oh that's that's for sure uh you know the seats are bigger they're a little more comfortable but mm -hmm. uh, first class international you get those sleeper seats mm -hmm. uh sometimes uh you know, the, there's a curtain that goes around. You get your own TV, nice light, uh, real comfortable seat. Yeah. And there's maybe six. There's maybe six feet between you and the seat in front of you. Well, what happened was years ago when I, I had a person in San Francisco work for, uh, who was it? TWA, mm -hmm. and uh, she said, anytime you want to fly to Europe, yeah, just yeah. let me know, and yeah. just go out and buy a coach ticket. And I'll yeah. upgrade you to first class. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, so when uh, when uh, Kathleen and I went to Europe, I uh, called her, and she upgraded both of us both ways, first class. Yeah. From San Francisco, but from yeah. San Francisco to New York, it was first class, but it wasn't first class. It was more like right. uh, expanded coach, expanded business. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe they give you, would you like a free champagne or would you like a truffle or something, you know? Yeah. Then, then to Europe, it was like, uh, would you take the spittle off my chin, please? Thank <laughs> you. you know? Yeah. That's uh, right. And it was wonderful. It was, a, you know, it was a, it was luxurious. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but what I found was is that if you uh, if you just bought anything domestic, I mean, first class domestic just wasn't even worth it. Yeah. You know? Well, it it wasn't that much more, and mm -hmm. they give you extra miles. Uh, I uh, now the I don't fly Delta because I'm afraid of the variant. So I I'm flying on American. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you know the COVID variant. Yeah, it's called the Delta. Yeah, 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 Delta variant. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm flying American. I don't have to worry about it. Right. But uh, <laughs> they, they, there's no there's no Delta variant on United. On co uh, yeah, yeah, on on American. On American. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, it it felt good to to fly again. But you know, uh, these conventions, I can't wait to get home. You know. Oh, I I, I, I want to. I, I always, whenever I had to go to a convention or something, or like we would sometimes do. When I was with Play Incorporated, we would go down for the uh, the uh, uh, CES trade show, mm -hmm. cons consumer In electronics Vegas. show, yeah. And we'd be there for five days. I couldn't wait to get home. You know, yeah. I mean, living in a hotel for five days. I mean, after a, after about the third day, you're going squirrely. Yeah, especially well, if you don't what, gamble. You know. Yeah. Well, what hotel is close to that big convention center? Is it the Sands or? Uh, where did you stay? I think the Hilton is near. Oh, the convention center. I think it's the Hilton's the closest one. But I was. Yeah. We were in. Uh, we stayed. Where did we stay? We stayed. I think in the Rio. Uh, oh. For one of the conventions. Uh, I I don't know what we did for the others. I'm trying to remember. But it was the yeah. Rio. I think. Yeah. Well, talking about Vegas, I guess now indoors they're asking you to mask up. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they're afraid that's going to be bad for business. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know whether to believe the news or not, because I think the news tries to scare people so that they will uh, get better ratings and they'll get more people watching it. But, you know, every time I look, they're saying that uh, more people are getting the, uh, uh, the Delta uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, and all over it's getting a lot it's getting a lot worse now yeah. los angeles uh los angeles and las vegas i think are the two uh cities that have uh, uh added masking uh 
Is there anything going on in New York? Uh, not really. Not that I know of. Oh yeah, the um, um, uh, the 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 mayor uh, put out a thing that all people working in medical facilities in New York must be vaccinated. Or they can they do be, that? Yes, they can. You well, know, I mean, these are health workers for crying out loud. You know, you have a right yeah. to try and maintain good public health. Uh, you know, this whole thing about the right of people not to get vaccinated, uh, I don't think they have that right. I don't think where public, uh, the public is concerned and the welfare of the public is concerned. Uh, I think that, uh, you know. I mean, what do we have to do to prove that getting vaccinated will save your life and save the well, lives of others? Well, I, I read a uh, thing in, uh, that was that the prime minister, the new prime minister of Israel, your namesake, Bennett, uh, said that the Not Two Pfizer, bad things. Israel calls themselves the Jewish state and the guy's name is Bennett. I got two <laughs> things against me now. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, they're coming after you. Yeah. Uh, so, so anyway, the uh, he's saying that the uh, Delta variant and the Pfizer is not as strong, the Pfizer is not as strong against the Delta variant, according to the Israeli tests. Uh, but then I read other stuff that says, no, the Pfizer. No, is, they say the is Pfizer is fine. Moderna is fine. This is the CDC. But Johnson & Johnson may be a little weaker against the Delta. However, however, it still prevents you from dying from it. Yeah. Okay. Well, the so. Johnson & Johnson is just a Band-Aid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, but so, by the way, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, this, as I said, this is my first trip out into the world, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it proves it can be done. But there's almost a thousand people at this convention, and a lot of them are saying, hey, I, you know, I'm a little worried. I went down to the gym this morning, 5.30 a.m., mm -hmm. uh, and I, I saw the uh, CEO of uh, Carpet One, and he mm -hmm. was uh, starting to work out. Mm -hmm. And I said, are you going into the yoga room? And he says, nah, he says, I'm, I'm really worried about, uh, you know, going to a gym mm -hmm. and, and working out, you know, with what's going on. So, you know, yeah. it's, uh, so it, 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 there's a fear there. Yeah, uh, there's a fear and, uh, you know, I think it's pretty pervasive. Nobody's wearing a mask, mm -hmm. uh, only on the plane. Uh, and in the airport, people were wearing a mask, but uh, outside of the airport, yeah. and uh, as long as you weren't on the plane, uh, you didn't have to wear it. And the other good thing about first class is they were always giving you a drink or they were always giving you uh, peanuts or some sort of snack. And so you could take the mask off. <laughs> and, you know. Yeah, well, that's nice uh, that you could do that, uh, but they're, they're charging a lot of money now for the airline. And they're yeah. charging a lot for baggage, you know. Uh, yeah, I carried on. Yeah, but I and, mean, you uh, know, it just it, it, it. Yeah, I remember the days when I was younger, where you went on an airplane and you got dressed up. Right. You got dressed up. The women I, dressed in their finest dresses, and men wore uh, wore suits. You know, it it was a it was a snazzy right. thing you were doing. The meals were uh, gourmet. You had well, nice they weren't gourmet, China. but they were certainly better than they are now. Well, you, you know the plane they they used for um, what was that movie uh, uh, where uh, the the one with the snakes uh, and snakes uh, on a plane? No, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, okay. Okay, the plane that they used was being restored in Richmond. Oh, that and was that. That was the uh, the uh, seaplane. The, it, yeah, it was a seaplane. It was, it was a, a, it pan, made pan. by Hughes. Yeah, yeah. And it was and meant for. I, it was it was a seaplane that wasn't just a, for a couple of people. It was like a passenger seaplane. Right. Yeah. And I went on that plane and looked at the seats. The seats were like a rattan, and uh, they, they were like a woven rattan. It, it was it was very nice. They were restoring it, mm -hmm. and they used it in the movie. Uh, it, it's not there anymore. Uh, the old Ford plant, uh, which uh, was in Richmond, I guess, was active during World War II. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is 
now used for a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, that's that's where the guys were restoring it. It was it was very interesting, yeah. uh, and and it was it was cool to go on it, sit in the cockpit, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and, and so, walk around. So I gotta ask you something, since you're the Trump fan. Uh, mm-hmm. Another one of Trump's people, his uh, campaign manager. Yeah, they yeah. stole money, I guess. Yeah, he. Yeah, they. They. Yeah, you know, I, I, here's now maybe the tenth person in his immediate circle okay who has been uh, arrested all right and i'm beginning to wonder when he's i think he did keep his campaign promise the one about about, the one about draining the swamp only we didn't realize he wanted to drain it to get all his employees and people to work with him well you know i don't know the full story about this but there there are people that uh, in uh, look if you look at uh, aoc AOC's campaign manager is her boyfriend, mm-hmm. and she diverted a million dollars uh, into his company for services. Uh, and you know, is that ethical? Well, you did know? he perform services? That's the question. Uh, well, he slept with her. But no, no. But did, <laughs> did he perform services for her campaign? And if he did, um, then I suppose, and you know, maybe he put out money for stuff, and they needed by. You know, but, purchase ads and things like that, and it was done through him. You know, you don't know. What are you doing? You're just watching Fox, that's all. No, but I'm asking you, is is it ethical for, uh, you know, uh, like a f- semi-family member to be... Uh, it you happens know, all the time, okay? Yeah. And And if you were running for political office, wouldn't you use people closest to you? Wouldn't they be the ones you trust the most? <laughs> no. I don't, yes, but I don't know how ethically correct that is, hmm. uh, or or legally, uh, you know, to, for that matter. Uh, so, th- th- you know, this guy on the Trump campaign, they said he diverted money, but you know, we don't know until uh, they investigate. Well, uh, they did investigate. That's why they arrested him today. Yeah, they found well, cause can... to charge him with right. these things. Okay. Right, but he's not convicted. He's not convicted yet, so I mean, we got to wait for that. But I'm just saying, my my line was, you know, when he said he was going to drain the swamp, why? So that's where he was going to get his employees from. Yeah, probably. You know, uh, because man, yeah. that's a swamp if you look at those pictures. Well, uh, you know, hey, uh, talking about swamps, uh, Texas, they sent uh, they all of their uh, Congress people didn't want to vote on this Voting Rights Act in Texas. So they leased well, a Well, they did this once plane. before. They did this once before, you know. That happened yeah, once now before. Yeah, five or six of them have COVID. Yeah. And and I thought that they were know, all vaccinated. I don't know if it's five vaccinated. or six, but they, enough that uh, Pelosi's worried. Well, Pelosi's aide, Pelosi's aide mm-hmm. came down with COVID. And they, uh, I believe that they think that this is due to uh, all the representatives from Texas coming up and, and meeting with Pelosi, but uh, they also met with um, Kamala Harris. Hmm. So now, but Kamala Harris, we saw on TV, she was one of the first to get a COVID injection. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is that uh, if you have a COVID injection, you, you could still come down with uh, COVID. Yeah. You can still test well, positive for COVID. Uh, if you come into contact with somebody, but it doesn't mean you're going to get it, okay? Or that you're even going to give it, probably give it to anybody else. But, you know, everybody's being very safe these days, you know, except for the people who don't get their vaccinations. And I got to say to them, you want to die? Go ahead, but don't die on my dime. Well, you know, know, I I don't know. A lot of people are saying, oh, Republicans don't want to get vaccinated. there are people that are afraid of vaccinations and I don't know that it's necessarily that they're Republican You know why they're afraid of them? They're afraid of getting a shot. You know, they're pussies. Mm -hmm. They don't want a needle stuck in their arm. You know, but the fact is that this needle is going to save your life. Okay? You don't don't feel it. You you Uh, don't feel it at all. I didn't feel it. Just a little, if if anything, just a little little sting. A little, you know. Yeah, just a prick. Uh, oh, that's uh, that's you, know. you. <laughs> like you. <laughs> you. <laughs> hey, uh, are you still using the uh, Therapy? 
Yes, I am. As a matter of fact, I, I had the Theraputty here. See, yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. I, I'm on black. You're on black. Uh, the, yeah, black, the, black didn't come with the kit. The most, uh, yeah, I know. I know, but the, I the, I, the heavier inspection. one, I can't even. I can't even get out of the jar. You know. Uh, yeah. I like uh, I like the red because it's light and it's fun and it's uh, it gives me the <laughs> exercise I need. You yeah. Know. Has it made a difference? Uh, not not maybe a little, maybe a tiny yeah. bit, but I don't use it that much. You know, we're talking mm -hmm. about this putty, folks, which is. Uh, yeah. A, a silicone putty that uh, you, you take out of this jar and then you just squeeze on it. And it it's supposedly good if you got arthritis. It helps a little bit with the arthritis. Yeah, you know, uh, you know my fingers used to be in a lot of pain. Faye used to have to rub them all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that I'm using this, uh, I don't tell her I'm out of pain, so she continues to massage my okay, hands. Good, good. I, I was going to say, don't give up on having her rub your hands. But uh, uh, tomorrow I'm going to my uh, eye guy about my lids being operated on. Uh -huh. So in a couple of weeks when this happens, folks, I won't be on for about a week. Mainly because it'll only take three days for me to get over it, you know, for it to start yeah. healing. But I'll look like crap. I'll look like somebody beat the crap out of me, I think. Wear sunglasses. Uh, I don't want to, you know, I, I would love to wear sunglasses now on this show because um, the lights are starting to be too bright for me for some reason, you know. Well, yeah. do, you, do you think that's the tears maybe? Uh... No, it's not it. You know, I've, I've had all kinds of stuff in my eyes to try and make things good and uh, it's not that good. Yeah, but anyway, the, the thing with the lids is they, they gotta they gotta bring the lids up and down, and mm -hmm. because I have trouble watching television because I don't have a full field of view, my lids come down too far, you know. Oh, so it's it's gonna help me with that, and, you know. Uh, whatever, you know. I, I I figure I'll get it. I'm I'm just afraid of the pain and the, you know, the the, the negativeness of it. I don't like the idea of it. Uh, but I got it's it. I got to do it because my eyes are just. Did, did they did they put you under when they no, uh, do this? No, so they don't. Or just give you a local. Yeah, they just give you a local, and then they I guess they give you some Valium or something, and just kind of put you in la la land. Yeah. You know while they do it, but uh, they, yeah, says I, they, I, I like the propofol. You know. Yeah, well, they uh, say they don't put you out. I wish they put me out, but I propofol think they, doesn't put you. out. I don't think that. Well, well, yes, it does. Oh. When they did my uh, angiogram, uh, they gave me propofol, and I, I was in La La Land, but I was able to talk to the surgeon. Oh well, then they the didn't give thing. you. They didn't give you propofol. Propofol no. just puts you out totally. Okay, because I asked the guy, uh, you know, what are you giving me? And I thought that's what he said. No, I mean, like what I had when I had my, uh, my uh, 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 prostate Kidney thing, the, no. seed, oh, prostate. the seed implantation. They didn't want to put me out because of my age. So mm -hmm. I said, what are you going to do? They're going to say a spinal tap. And I always thought that was terrible. But it really yeah. isn't. They just went in the back, a little sting in the back. And the next thing I know, I'm, I'm Patrick. You know, right. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, that's, that's I'm what dead they below the waist. Better. Yeah, I'm dead yeah. below the waist. And uh, then they gave me, they gave me Valium, intravenous yeah. Valium. And I was, I was in La La Land, but I could hear them all around me. And I got to hear for the first time in my life what goes on in, under, when you go under surgery and they start talking to each other. Oh, about their vacation. Yeah. So what are you doing this weekend? Well, I wait a minute, hold on a second. Can I mean the sutures, please? I'm going out to the, I think I'm going out to Fire Island this weekend. Oh, good. <laughs> By the way, how's your, how's your kids? Oh, my kids are fine, you know. And I'm going, but why don't you, are you people should be like they are on television. Sutures, scalpel. Oh, give me a give me a clamp, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a party. Yeah, uh, and I'll cry if I want to. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't feel a thing, and I was pretty much in la la land. And the worst part was afterwards that no. I uh, what is your hand up or something? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I was holding the thing so that it would be at the right angle for the head, and my hand must have gone. But anyway, the, the thing that, that really got me was that. Uh, uh, it, it just uh, after it was over, it took three hours for the spinal to go away, 
And yeah. I felt rather frustrated that I couldn't even get up. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't feel anything below my waist. Yeah, which, well, which, that's which like is, me. When, when I had my operation, it's still good for nothing. I, well, I can, it's good for peeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. But you don't have any problems with that anymore, do you? Yeah. Uh, you? Uh, you mean the prostate or? Yeah, prostate, uh, peeing and stuff like that. Uh, no, well, I, I've been peeing a lot. And I think it has to do with a diabetes medicine that they're giving me. Oh, okay. That's possible. And uh, at my gym, the guy says, look, if you start following what, I, what I'm telling you to do and you, and you follow my nutrition stuff, he says, you'll be off all that diabetes medicine in six weeks. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, well, you know, listen to them and see what happens and let me know. Yeah. I, uh, but, I, you know, I just, I just uh, you know, it... it uh, it's something when you go through something like that. And I know that you went through the prostate removal. I mean, they just right. stuck a bunch of seeds in mine, and now it looks like a chia pet. You know, so. <laughs> grew hair? <laughs> yeah, grew, grew. I just imagined it like a chia pet. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, I don't find the prostate is all that functional anymore. No. Uh, and, 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 uh, the penis has a little trouble getting up, you know. So. Yeah, well, mine has more than a little trouble. Huh? It's useless. It's useless. It's yeah. a, I I came up with a I learned a great term from my father years ago, and then I yeah. used it in a joke when I said my my penis is now a vestigial organ. A vestigial okay. organ being an organ that doesn't work anymore, you know, but I, it's still there, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, the, your, your yeah. appendix is a vestigial yeah. organ. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I used to listen to these old men and they say, oh, it's only good for peeing. Now I know what they meant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I got many good years out of it. OK. Oh, yeah. Me too. You know, I, I, I had a lot, lot of activity. I have, a, I have a lot of great memories of things I did with my penis. Yes. Y you and know. places I put it. Yeah. So, you know, um, I, I, can, I can live with the fact that uh, it's not as functional. I mean, I don't know that it's as functional because uh, I, don't, I, haven't, I don't go out and get any strange and stuff like that. So I don't know if I were in that, that kind of situation, if I would, uh, I would you know, uh, suddenly be aroused enough, you know. But all, yeah. I, all I know is that in certain masturbatory activities, it it I it does, but not much. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> you know, probably doing better than yours. You oh, know. much better than mine. Yeah, you have uh, you have yeah. no prostate. They removed the thing completely. Yeah. And, uh, well, at yeah. least they don't get the sheets. Here dirty. we are, folks. It's two old men <laughs> talking about our prostate uh, conditions and our operations. Yeah. No, there are many yeah. things they can do, folks. They can remove the prostate. Or they can do as they did with me. They first they gave me radiation, uh, and uh, then my penis glowed in the dark for a couple of weeks, and then they went in and did the seeds, and uh, now I have no. Uh, they have the PSA is what they ju judge whether they have cancer or something, and I you know I don't have any PSA problems at all. Yeah, I have no no. I have PSA. no PSA at all. Yeah. 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 And uh, I need to go in for one of those tests pretty soon and make yeah. sure. Well, I just uh, went in for one recently. I was worried about it, and then he writes me, congratulations, no, we can't find a pulse when it comes to your... Uh, <laughs> for your prostate. Your, your, your uh, PSA, you know, you just did no discernible PSA. So yeah. I went, okay, I'll buy that for as long as I can, you know. Uh, yeah. But. Uh, oh, it looks like uh, that guy from Brooklyn, uh, who was a police captain, is going to be pr possibly your new mayor. Uh, yeah, you know, unless yeah, it's yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, not going to be. It's, it's not going to be Curtis. Nah. Uh, Curtis, yeah, nah. Sliwa, nah. Nah. Sliwa he hasn't even got a chance. Yeah. yeah, in New York, come on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, they haven't been able to elect a Republican I, there in years. I mean, I uh, suppose I should be for Curtis Sliwa because he's a fan of mine. But, yeah. uh, I, you know, I, I don't know if that's any reason to necessarily vote for him, you know. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see if this uh, this guy from Brooklyn, I yeah. uh, forgot his name, but, uh, you know, it looks like he's the heir apparent. Yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, but every mayor we get sucks. So you know it doesn't matter. Yeah, one pretty much well, sucks like the other. You remember Lindsay? Yeah, Lindsay. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he come up with the story, the Big Apple? Didn't he coin that phrase? I don't know if he did or not. Yeah, I, I, I don't he... know. I'm I'm trying to. I, I should look it up and see who and who who invented the term the Big Apple. Yeah. And why we why even you called it that? What is it? You know, Big Apple. It's not, yeah. It doesn't look like an apple. It's not round. The shape of it isn't an apple. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, I thought he coined that phrase. John know. Lindsay. Yeah. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, let me look it up here. Uh, who coined the term? Who coined the term Big Apple? The Big Apple. Well, I, I it'll, oh, the Big Apple. Okay. I wouldn't go. be surprised if I was wrong, but... Uh... Uh, the Big Apple nickname for New York City was first popularized in the 1920s. Wow. By John J. Fitzgerald, a sports writer at the New York Morning Telegraph. Its popularity since the 1970s is due by a promotional campaign by the New York Tourist Authority. So. I see. And so Lindsay just used to call it the Big Apple. Right, but it's called the Big Apple because uh, I guess it was a sports writer who probably, you know, it sounds like it would be a sports writer, you know? Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, hey, it's, it's interesting. I'm glad you looked it up. Yeah, I, I know. I've really only got one it. person waiting to talk. Really? Yeah. Who yeah. is it? Uh, uh, Vernon. Vernon. Yeah. Oh. Put, put them on and, uh, uh, you know, I'll okay. fill in for a little while. Okay, let me see here. Let me get rid of your your Phil Meyer. Me. There we go. Yeah. And then let me just bring him in. Why not? Uh, All right. Okay, here comes Vernon. And Vernon, Vernon, Vernon. Here comes Vernon. Hello, Vernon. Hey, Vernon. How are you? We thought we'd bring you in. You're the only person who's called tonight. Wow. This is the worst it's ever been. I mean, not that Phil is the worst it's ever been, <laughs> but he's uh, close. Yeah, Alan told me that he was going to the city to smoke cigars with a friend. Actually, it's a friend of mine, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. Then he didn't get on Friday because yeah. Friday was I did a, a show with just uh, three hand-selected people. You know, that was a nice show. I watched that. That was a nice show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, we, what we do is every... Uh, Every Saturday night, we get together. Oh, here comes Jeffrey. Uh, we get huh. together, and we uh, we just get on Zoom and talk with each other for a couple hours. You know, and it's become a tradition on most most Saturday nights when most of us can make it. And so I said to them once, I said, "Hey, why don't we do this some Friday night? Just do the show like this, uh, because we 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 have such a nice camaraderie with each other." And a, it's really an intelligent, uh, substantive discussion. And uh, they said, fine. In fact, they suggested I bring you on with them, Phil. Yeah, uh, I heard. Which, which I, I found unusual, because I wouldn't think that Josh and Kevin oh, they, would want you on. Maybe Patrick, you know, but they all said, yeah, you know, he could be here. We, we have nothing against him. Yeah, you know, I, I like the fact that you you have a place where you feel comfortable and that you talk to these guys and they feel comfortable so yeah. you know uh, I was trying I, to I, I was I trying answer. to recreate that mood it's a little hard to recreate it only because we're when we're doing it we're not watching our p's and q's you yeah. know uh, I think we're a little more careful about what we have to say when we know it's going out on the show okay yeah so yeah, that, yeah, yeah. No, I I understand, and plus you don't want to get demonetized or. You know. <laughs> well, it's nothing like that. But anyway, so we didn't do do a show really on Friday. Now Charlie Wallace isn't here tonight, because Charlie is is doing uh, his uh, what do you call it? his uh, umpiring. umpire umpiring, four nights yeah. this week. Wow! And it's the four nights I'm on. So, so. is that is that why uh, there's no uh, count in the amount? I see. It, that's why. There's no yes. COVID update. Yes. No COVID that's update. That's exactly yeah. the reason. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you know, this iPad is not that easy to, to, to hold. 
Uh, I'm, I'm glad you got these two guys here because <laughs> I'm going to have to go to sleep soon. You know, it's an hour difference between uh, San Francisco and Denver. Oh, we, we, we. Like it's only yeah. it's only nine o'clock. What is it there now? Uh, uh, 10 it's it's nine ten. Nine ten. But uh, uh, this morning I got up at four thirty and I went to the gym at five thirty mm -hmm. and I tried to do some of the things that I've been doing in in the class that I've been taking mm -hmm. and I I think that the class I'm doing most resembles something called CrossFit and uh, so they had a kettlebell which is this. Uh, bell and you, you swing it between your legs and uh makes you feel like you still have testicles huh? well yeah you know those were big balls <laughs> and and then uh the medicine ball i, I use that and you, you lift it and you put it over your head and, uh this is uh, i was able to i didn't use the well, escalator. what do we have to do get you to go all the way to denver in order to work out well no i you know i'm working out uh at uh 5 30 in the morning on mondays Thursdays and 9 a.m. on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And how's that, I, how's that affected you? Uh, put it this way. I, uh, went, uh, I went up and down the stairs rather than take the escalator. And it's, it's, it's pretty steep. Uh, I wasn't out of breath. Uh, I, 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 and, I, and I took the stairs at a well, fast I've, jump. I've been going out and walking you know, every day. And lately I haven't because it's been too hot. And I miss yeah. that, you know. But uh, no, people have asked me what you uh, look like thin, and I said fat. <laughs> oh, what I look like thin? <laughs> yeah, fat. Well, you were, you were, you know, uh, when I helped you out at Camel, I was about 140. Oh, you were just a broth of a child then. You were, yeah. You know, when you well, finally sh showed up on here, I first didn't recognize you. Yeah. yeah. I still don't, actually. I just take you a, <laughs> take it at your word that you knew me way back when. <laughs> well, you know, I uh, you I was the only guy you could trust at four in the morning for you to pick me up in Sausalito, and we go into Camel, and I would uh, produce your show because you needed somebody to train while you went on vacation with Susan, and so uh, during that summer, uh, you trained me for several weeks, and then I helped the jocks that uh, filled in for your show yeah 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 i i seem to remember that vaguely yeah and do you remember using my apartment with red no i don't wow red was a, a lady friend that i had yeah but i don't remember very, i don't why would i be using your because you were still living with susan oh i still had a wife <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God, was I a terrible human being back then? Uh, I yes, think you right, guys were. right. <laughs> what's wrong yeah. with your What's wrong with your hand, Vernon? Why have you got that? Uh... It's a compression glove for arthritis. Oh, really? Hmm. Oh, see, what we're using is this. Yeah, but uh, a compression glove for arthritis. I should think about that. I went and got the, you know, the shot. Yeah. And, and it didn't work. It oh, the cortisol? Uh, it, it, well, it, right. it worked for a couple of days, and then it came back again. My right is that... hand is starting to have problems down oh. here in the metacarpal. Right down uh, here, area. right? right in that my, area. Wife, my wife had it operated on in December of 2019, right before COVID. She's fine now, but mine's starting to act act like act up like hers did two years ago. Mine, they just gave me cortisone shots, but it didn't seem to help it. And he, well, my, she, she had those before they actually did the surgery to fix it. Oh, and I they see. Went in and fixed it then. Well, my doctor told me that this area right here is where most older people get arthritis. If you yep. get arthritis, most people will get it right there. It's pretty common. Do you have it, uh, Jeff? You're an old fart. He's uh, muted. Uh, he's he's muted. He's muted. Oh, okay. Let me and see. And so here. is Brian. Oh, there we go. There he goes. Okay. Uh, uh, do you uh, do you have a little arthritis at all, uh, Jeff? And, and, uh, in your hands. Yeah. yeah. Me? In your hands? Yeah. My hands are just old. I mean, do you have arthritis? course oh okay all right that's yes, what i sure. asked <laughs> mandatory it's mandatory well now what are you holding up there brian that's my mouse that's your oh mouse? it's uh is that yeah. special 
Yeah, it's special because uh, we have at work, you know, we have uh, we have our ergo team, and I was getting carpal tunnel because my hands my hands are so big. Now, I have I have large hands, so. Well, you know what they say. I know. Yeah, large gloves. Okay, so <laughs> so because my hands are big, uh, you know, it covers that mouse, and my my wrist would be hitting the bottom, even with those, you know, all the ergo stuff that they put, all the fancy foam and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, the the EHS guy uh, recommended this, the ergo guy, because now when I'm I'm holding that mouse like this, uh, all the weight is on this little piece of fat right here. So. Uh, it rests on there instead of down here. So this one actually works really well. How do well. you hold it? Hold it up and then hold it like you would yes. it. Yeah, so see, it, and that little piece of fat right there is where it, hold, where it hits. So the best thing is Tiffany can't use my computer because she hates this mouse. She can't, she can't use it. Because it's a little bit tricky how to how to go up and down, you know, all around. Yeah. Use the cursor. It, it, so, it, wow. Have you ever used those, uh, those uh, ergonomic keyboards at all? Yeah, the ones one that are... And and a, v a butterfly, v shape. butterfly, yeah. they call them. Yeah. I could never get used to those. Yeah, I can't get used to those. So. You know, and I know they're probably them. if you can use them, they're probably pretty good. You know. Yeah. But uh, you know, there's something about the Apple keyboards that they're too small. They, they they're little chiclets. Oh, the, uh, these I, I keyboard? You mean this? This is what I got here. This you're talking about one of these? Yeah. 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 The chiclet yeah. board. Yeah. They're chiclets. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, back in the day, early computers, they had keyboards that I, felt like typewriters. I, yeah, I like those big keyboards. Yeah. And I think you, and, can, and, I think you can still buy them. Yeah. Well, they, they, were, they were tactile like a, like a typewriter. You felt when you, when you pressed on the key, it clicked. Well, you know what I think? I think here's what happened. Okay, what happened when you buy, a, when you buy an Apple? Uh, right. Forget about the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the portables, the laptops, but when you would yeah. buy an Apple, what would come with the Apple? A mouse and a keyboard. Okay. Uh, not yeah. not not the Mac Pro. No, yeah, no, 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 and also the uh, no the, oh, Ma but... the Mac the Mac the desktop Macs oh, all okay. came with a keyboard and a mouse, and yeah. the keyboard was this huge mother keyboard. You know, still have one back here. And it was terrific. It was just terrific. Gave you enough room for typing. You know, the keys had a certain resistance to them, you know, and all of that. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, they, they, came out with, they come out first with one less than this, and then finally this. And I think they're mm -hmm. just cheaper to produce. This, <laughs> this is Stephanie's, and Simon has one about the same size. Yeah. But, you know, there, there's lights up. Each key lights up and glows. And... And then if you go on YouTube, they have like these tutorials. Yeah, but look how much people. thicker, look how much thicker that is oh, yeah. than this. And, so. and each each of these, you know, they have these special ones that make a clicking noise. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. do all the reviews on how the clicking noise is faster or louder or harder. There's like a whole tutorial on each kind of key that they sell. Like well, crazy. you know what happened? I've got another keyboard for my PC over here. <laughs> and it's this, and it's about, yeah. about the same kind of thing as you're talking about. But the problem with it is, is that on two occasions, I've accidentally spilled water on it. Okay? Because I bring in liquid for me to, to suck on and whatever while I'm doing the show. And, I, you know, and, and then what happens usually when it goes into this Apple keyboard, you just wait for it to dry out and it's good to go again. These things, forget it. It doesn't work ever again. So I, last time I had to replace this one, I bought two of them just in case I fuck it up again. You know. Do you have any canned air? Yes, I do, uh, but that doesn't help. No. It doesn't help. Yeah. Whoosh. You need a bowl of rice to stick it in. Is, well, I don't know if the rice would do it for these. I mean, this is such a cheap keyboard. It's like, you know, a $10 keyboard. Uh, I, the reason I bought it is because it's small enough to fit right in this area over here, which is a very cramped area. So, I mean, I have two keyboards here, one for this machine, one for this machine. And then, of course, two more over in that direction, one of which is Marjorie's, which I have as a, uh, uh, sh she has the, the wide one with all the numericals in it. Yeah. So it's really big, and it's, a, uh, it's not wi wireless. Uh, it's actually you plug it in and it, it works. 
Uh, so she has that one, you know. We have everything around. We have more computers in this house than we should have, you know. Then you add to it with a couple of iPhones, a couple of iPads, you know. Uh, Faye's birthday was Sunday. Yeah. I didn't know what to buy her, so of course I went to the Apple store and I got her the new iPad. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't use a lightning. Uh, it uses uh, US, the mini USB on both sides. The USB-C. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's not it's not a lightning. So so of course now, you, you know they've had the those US, they've had those USB Cs they call them for right. the longest time. Yeah. And Apple just has never gone to them because they like their proprietary stuff, and the 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 uh, lightning was proprietary. Yeah. And somebody should tell them one day, why don't you just kind of put stuff there that everybody can hook up. You know, uh, you always they don't had, want that. You always had to get one of these things for uh, for the iPhone, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, and pigtails. You got to get pigtails if you have a uh, a, a Motorola style jack, and uh, and you want to plug it into the Lightning. Yeah. Uh, and that's tw what twenty five bucks from Apple. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to ask you a question. Can you stick around, Phil? Is it possible? Or are you getting tired? Sure. Okay. No, I'm getting tired, but I can stick around. Well, I'm just begging for every view, every caller I can get. <laughs> Times are tough. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, it, with the Charlie is out tonight. He's out. Yeah. yeah he's. Well, where's yeah. Alan? Uh, I uh, know, he's, he's out a, smoking he's a, with some friends. But yeah, he went. He went to the city. But don't ask. Alan and Phil. Don't. Alan and Phil cannot be on the same show together, please. Who? <laughs> yeah. Well, don't 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 say where's Alan because uh, if you say his name three times, he'll he'll. Oh, well, he's probably he's probably listening to the show driving Fremont to the city. <laughs> Good. I hope he's, uh, I hope he's crying uh, behind the steering wheel. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, today something happened which kind of pissed me off. Now, as you know, I've always been into space travel. I've always been yeah. a futurist. Oh, I've yeah. always been That's... into, you know, going to Mars and going to the moon and uh, going anywhere just to get the hell out of this place. Anyway, today, I think Jeff Bezos cheapened space travel. Not at all. No, I think he. Che I, I think he did. I think he, he, to begin with, calling themselves astronauts is a bit of a push. They were weightless. They, they were weightless for about two minutes. Three, three, yeah, two, three minutes. And they almost had to but, push themselves up to get themselves to float around. Well, they were at, what, 62, 63 miles? I, I mean, uh, well, I mean, let's face it, what's his name? Branson cheapened it by not even hitting space. You know. Well, he was weightless too, and no, you that's know, only yeah. because he was coming down. That's because they were coming down. Is the reason they uh, were weightless. That's what they well, do in movies, right? It, they it, trick. Well, they do that in movies no, on airplanes. No, it's not movies. It's it, they literally when they trained astronauts for weightlessness, they would put them in what they called the the vomit comet. They called it, and it was this plane that would go uh, take a dip and then go up like this, and as it hit that parabola. Uh, you started floating, wow. uh, and it gave them the feeling of weightlessness. And that's what happened to Branson. What happened today to uh, Bezos is it, it was true weightlessness of space, but it was only for a couple of minutes because they went up past, I forget what the name of the area is up there. There's a name for it. Uh, Tahoe. Tahoe, so. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but the you, stratosphere? You up, well, it's uh, not the stratosphere. It's 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 called something line. It's a name. Kepler line or something. Yeah, Kepler's yeah. Or something. yeah. Anyway, they went above that and official. That's the official beginning of space. Okay, mm -hmm. outer space, weightlessness. That's where, that's where uh, uh, fins on a rocket do not serve any function. Okay. Well, up until it gets up there, the fins have a function for stabilization. The minute you get out there, they, they're just useless. There's not, uh, you know. But anyway, they went up there and then they just came right back down. Well, there was no pilot. The and there was no was pilot. Automatic. Yeah, there was, was no automated. pilot. The original astronauts, when they were gonna be sent up, okay, were told they were gonna go in this 
what was a very small capsule. Capsule, yeah. Yeah, one person in a capsule. And uh, they said, uh, uh, it'll all be ground control. And they said, no, we want the ability to be able to control it to a certain extent, because all we don't want to be, as they called it, spam in a can. Uh, we want to be able to, to do a little bit of the negotiating of this, of this thing. Uh, and so they were pilots. These guys didn't do shit. I mean, well, I'm, I'm sorry, you strapped me into a capsule, send me up on a rocket, which I would love to do. I'd do it tomorrow if they asked me. Uh, I'd rather do it with SpaceX because they really go into space and instead of this pussy blue origin. Um, and I would go in a second, but I would never have the audacity to call myself an astronaut. Yeah, does that mean every passenger that goes up there, all these billionaires, everyone's going to be an astronaut all of a sudden? They, yeah, they're going to say they're all astronauts. Well, it, it's only 28 million a ride. Uh, no, it's it not 28 one... million a ride. It's only a hundred, what, 200,000 a ride. Well, just uh, look at how many. Payment. Just look at how many uh, poor kids you could feed for that. Well, I understand. Uh, you know where I find that wrong, uh, right. Vernon, and I get that. I've gotten that on a lot of occasions. If you want to say that about NASA, you can say that. You got a good argument. When you're saying that about these guys, <clears throat> these are private entrepreneurs sending sending people up to space, enough. and their individual companies probably do contribute to food programs and a lot of other things too. But didn't they win? Didn't they win some money from the government? Uh, for, they they for won. They won a prize of one and a half billion dollars, which is what got SpaceX started. But now they're making their money hauling people up to the space station and doing, putting, sent, uh, going up and sending- Satellites. Uh, putting up satellites. And, and now and, we don't have to have the Russians take our people up to the space station and back. That's right, that's right. Everyone, but anyway, the point, the point that I'm making is, Vernon, that your argument is very, would have been very good where NASA was concerned and where the space program formerly was concerned. But none of that money is being diverted from public programs to take care of this space program. This space program is 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 a business venture, and it's yeah, all being done well, by private industry. Wait, I, I I I was very. I'll impressed. get to you in a second. Yeah, okay. You know, let me let me go first to John. He had his hand up first. Yeah. Sure. I, yeah the, uh, Amazon uh, is paying for that off the fucking. The sweat equity from the fucking their employees. Well, you know, you can get into that. That's a whole different political issue. <laughs> you know what he said? But, He's, uh, he goes, I want to thank our customers and our employees because you paid for this. <laughs> John, didn't, John, didn't he make a delivery when he went up there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you what they did today. Uh, I got this thing from, uh, in fact, I can show the, the audience this. Uh, this is a, a letter they sent me. Uh, we wanted to uh, let you know we've updated our customer conditions of use. One of our updates involves how disputes are resolved between Amazon. Previously, our conditions of use set an arbitration process for those disputes. Our updated conditions use of use provides a dispute for resolution now in the courts. That means if you want to resolve a dispute with Amazon, you have to pay to go to a court to do it. Uh, it says, please visit us here to see the updated terms in full. Let's just look at this for a second. Let me bring this up. I have no idea what's here. Conditions of use. Look at that. Look at that. I'm going to read all that shit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to even care about that. Was this information helpful? No. Okay. <laughs> Confusing or wrong? Confusing or wrong? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Hmm? What? What were you going to say, uh, Brian? Uh, I, said, Brian? I said both, confusing and wrong. Confusing and wrong, and or wrong. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, the. Uh, uh, I've never had a problem returning something. Or, uh, that oh, I, wait a minute. Let me go back to, to your Amazon. pictures here. You you've never had trouble. Have you tried lately? Um, yeah, I uh, I bought uh, I bought some socks. Uh -huh. And it, it, it took them two months to send them to me. Finally, after about a month, I told them cancel the order and refund my money. 
-hmm. And uh, And he said, sorry, we can't. We're sending up a rocket. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, talking about the rocket. Well, wait a minute. Let me uh, let me finish with this. So uh, if you call them now, like I have a problem where Amazon delivery. Something like seven or eight times in the last two months has managed to not deliver the package, even though they say it was delivered. And when I call them to complain, they say, well, you have to wait 24 hours because it might be, they might have said it was it was delivered, but it really wasn't. But you have to wait 24 hours. Well, every time I've ever mm-hmm. waited 24 hours, it still didn't come. And they just make resolution of getting you to them, they, please call back tomorrow. Yeah, I got to call back tomorrow. I'm busy. I got other things to do. What do you know, it's just do? gotten it's gotten worse. Sure. It, there used to be a time where you said didn't come. They go, okay, we'll send you a new one. You know, yeah, no question. About well, maybe it. people abuse that. No, he had to pay uh, for a rocket. Yeah. Well, talking about the rocket. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I watched it on my phone uh, during the conference, and uh, what I was really impressed with was. Um, they said that the rocket was going to come down on parachutes and it would slow down to one mile an hour yeah. before it yeah. uh, made contact. Well, they had a, uh, a miles per hour speedometer uh, thing mm-hmm. uh, that I could see, and it was 10 miles an hour when it hit. And then it went to zero. So it was 10, then zero. So they, they, they got a little harder hit than they thought they were going to get. Well, but here here's the thing. Uh, uh, what they were doing, what they're doing, they're not coming really from up in high space. So they're not going to hit the friction of the Earth like they normally would were they coming in from, you know, say the moon or whatever, from the space station. Uh, that's yeah. a whole different story. Um, and this this was basically, they just went up, they came down. It's a 10 minute ride. That's all it was. There, six, 600 people gave deposits of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars yeah the the 18 year old kid was supposed to be on the second flight and what happened was somebody who paid 28 million uh to be on that flight because that's what you had to pay i guess above the the 250 was just a deposit yeah Yeah. uh so the guy pays 28 million and he says i got a scheduling conflict and so he's wait, wait a minute. I have a choice go. here of either going into space or going to a carpet convention. Let well, me see. It, what do I want to do? <laughs> well, it wasn't the carpet convention. He probably had a dentist appointment. It didn't need to stuff. <laughs> stuff yeah, I yeah and, and if I if I miss a dental appointment, they're going to charge me for it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Tw- Twenty eight million. So the the kid, as far as I know. Uh, the father, uh, who's a hedge fund uh, guy out of Australia, negotiated a lower price with Jeff Bezos to get the kid in that yeah. seat. Well, they also, and, I think, felt for PR purposes having a kid with this old lady who yeah, had she, been. Well, a, she was an, she was trained to be an astronaut. Yeah, here's here's what and, I here's what I hate I, about the here's what I hate about the network. She's today, eighty two. Today I'm trained, watching. I'm watching. She was trained. Yeah, and she was trained to be an astronaut, not just. Well, yeah, well, well, yeah, but well, she, they wouldn't let her go because she was a woman. No, 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 no. Here's yeah, the, well, yeah, but here, that, that makes no sense. Maybe back then, I don't know. But all I know is that I was watching CBS and the announcers were one of the. And I think it was Gail King. She's a moron. Uh, Gail King says uh, 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 women weren't allowed to go into space. And uh, she, uh, and they said this woman. She said something like, "This woman was, is the first woman to have gone into space." And I went, "No, well, wait a minute. How come we got a woman killed in the Challenger? And how many years ago was that? Mm-hmm. That was in the '80s. And and she was a female. You yeah, know, there've been plenty of women on on the. Uh, hold on a second. Oh yeah. What do you got there, uh, Brian? I don't know if you can see it from a reflection, but that's Austin Powers, and it looks like Bezos. <laughs> and he, in the movie, he launches into his spaceship and goes up, and it looks just like Bezos' rocket going right out. It oh. looks like Bezos. That's uh, Austin Powers. You well, know, I think. That. Now, Did, I don't didn't know. Didn't the Be- rocket? Yeah, it. Did, it didn't, looks. Didn't the rocket look like a penis? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and this one, does too. That's what they made fun of, and then it looks just like Bezos. <laughs> you know. Um, Actually, I think that you know it, the, the people really doing the space work are, is is SpaceX. You know, and they're getting the job done. 
but you know, did you? Since I explained it to you, Vernon, do you see my point about why we? You say we got problems here on Earth. We got to take care of those first. This is I all. Just, this is. I was all, just repeating what my wife said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these but are all. I well, don't tell, necessarily believe well, that. Well, tell but, but, her that these are all private companies. No money is being taken or diverted from programs that would help people. <clears throat> you know, uh, and it, it's uh, you know it's good. You know. This is the this is the beginning of space travel, and whether it's just sixty miles or or fifty miles. It's it's the beginning when they at the Kitty Hawk when they flew uh, the hundred uh, feet. Yeah, it was a hundred feet. And look and look what we're doing now. And they charge you, know, you a do I, they charge you a dollar a ride for that one. <laughs> yeah, but you know, hey, this, yesterday I, I got or Monday I got on a plane and uh, I was in San Francisco and and several hours later I'm in Denver. You know, I, can can you imagine? You know. If well, there are, are there is one company I, I'm trying to remember the name of them that are working on a thing now where actually they will be doing passenger flights suborbitally between here and Europe, and you'll be able to get there in like 30 minutes. There's going to be another Concorde they're they're coming out with. Well, I think that's what uh, they're uh, uh, yeah. That's what they're talking about. It's a it's a suborbital uh, contraption. We should go up and come down. Boom. That's it. I'm still with Branson's wife. Maybe that's what Branson was working on. <laughs> no, that's uh, Branson. Branson's thing was like a, a toy, an know? amusement ride. An amusement <laughs> ride. Yeah. Uh, has, on the SpaceX thing, is, isn't uh, uh, there's a tunnel thing that uh, Musk is doing with magnets? No, Musk. And Musk was going to try a high speed rail between Los Angeles and San Francisco uh, but I think he's kind of given up on the idea because they've kind of like been he's there are too many stumbling blocks and getting the rights to do it and the, you know the digging of the, the holes and so on the name of the company is called boring uh, because they bore no, the name of this show is boring it's also a boring <laughs> project uh, I don't know. I think wait, it's wait, pretty wait. neat. You know, it, uh, you could go that fast because there's, I guess, no friction. And yeah, uh, 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 Brian had his hand up there. I, I'm still with Vernon's wife, though. I still think one person shouldn't be that rich to be able to make rockets and all that stuff. I mean, well, no, but it, in, 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 in the case, I, I went to a show this weekend. And people are complaining because my friend lives in Tracy and the other friend lives over there. They just talk about the, how the homeless are taking over. And yeah, you know, there's just not enough being done. So yeah, but my, I, I'm, my, my, my point I'm is that we, enough, all those type of things. Well, where I disagree with you, you, you know, on that is that when you talk about Bezos, maybe that's true. OK, when you're talking about Musk to begin with, when you're talking about billionaires, you're talking about a low end billionaire. All right. Mm -hmm. He's actually started a company that mm -hmm. is doing the work, mm -hmm. you know, and is 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 really pretty much taking care of itself. And uh, uh, nothing's being taken out of anybody's pocket for that. You're not but paying. I, hmm? well, they, they were trying to toss up some number. I was watching CNN when they landed, and they were tossing up all these, you know, just amazing. This is, you know, unbelievable and all this stuff. And They wouldn't you know, know what how, amazing was. I know. I know. And, and how many people are going to be able to colonize, you know, the moon or colonize Mars and all this stuff? And I'm like. We have a crop of life here. What do you think the life there? Well, I I really think that we're going to need to get out of here eventually. There is going to eventually be. I mean, we there's all uh, eventually going to be a cataclysmic event uh, here on this uh, this planet. It could be a meteor, a huge meteor striking the Earth, the thing that wiped out the dinosaurs. Uh, we need to be ready for something like that, and we need to be somewhere else to be ready for that. And, and we can't then say, oh, gee, we should have gone to Mars. <laughs> you know, we should be on Mars. And I, I do believe our future. Let me put this romantically for you, as hmm. I've, I've put it uh, in, in, so many times. Uh, we are like babies in a cradle. And what we're doing is we're leaving the cradle now. And our destiny is in the stars. Our destiny isn't staying here and being tethered to this planet. Just like the future of a, a child isn't to be tethered to the cradle. How do you like that? You one? know, <laughs> hundreds of years ago, people set out on boats 
and and discovered a new world and uh and then discovered know, that they could take slaves there yeah <laughs> yeah well who, who else was going to row the boat yeah but uh, you know, uh, uh vernon you got your hand up what's amazing to me is what we are doing here tonight when in my lifetime my very first personal computer was a commodore 64. yep mm. yep and you think it's a short and it had 64 k yes that's why they called it the commodore that, 64. that that was an advanced computer because i had one of those yeah pet, I see. Uh, from <laughs> uh radio shack the pet uh 4k and uh and it was fancy it had a uh not a cassette but a, a mini reel to reel that, yeah but uh, i think they came in they may have come after the commodore i don't know well the commodore i think was more powerful than than the pet yeah this thing what I, I can go down in the bart station and jam out and get paid for it listen listen to this thing it runs on little uh batteries. wait a minute let's hear and see if he's any better playing the guitar now than he was a few months ago the, oh the ukulele no no he's got his big uh is that a fender yeah, but this thing is cool. Wait. Okay. It's only got five strings. You got a discount? Well, that, <laughs> that's like the old pig amp. Yeah, but it just runs on batteries. But listen to how good it sounds. Yeah. Anyways. Hang on. Well, I don't know. We couldn't probably tell here anyway because it's going through your cheap ass microphone. <laughs> a good amp. Listen. Wait. Sounds great. <laughs> got to turn it on. Uh, is this called dead air? Yeah, it's called dead air. <laughs> <laughs> got to plug it into the guitar. We weren't planning yeah. on dead air, but we got it, whether we wanted it or not. We can't hear you. Well, he's got to plug it in. We can't and, hear and you. The, and the batteries aren't supplied with the unit, so he's going to have to run down to the store and get that. <laughs> I think it's too far away. I think it's too far away from the microphone, your microphone. We can't huh? hear it. Can't hear it? No. 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 Oh, there we now go. I hear it. Sounds pretty good, huh? Do people a favor in San Francisco and don't go into the BART, okay? <laughs> Not for a while. How many coins did they throw at you? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give you 20 bucks. I'm going to give you 20 bucks. But it was really? The kid put 20 bucks in there and then the guy looked at me like what where did you like where does kid get that money yeah yeah well anyway so i was uh, i was really uh you know i mean i i i was wonderful that bezos went up and he came down and everybody was safe and they went up there and took a little space jaunt and so on but uh for people to misrepresent that as space travel to misrepresent those people as astronauts I think was a great disservice to all the astronauts who have gone before, who were literally, uh, it, you know. It was a tribute to was it John Glenn? I don't care yeah, who they said. John they Glenn were. actually went into space. Yeah, yeah but it, his capsule was a tribute to that, and you know this this is pri a private people. Uh, is starting to explore and this is just the first this trip this isn't even exploration look this was going up and coming down you got to realize that even john glenn who was our first man in space was suborbital he did about a half a uh, thing mm -hmm. around the earth uh john glenn was the first to completely circumnavigate the globe uh but uh, these people were real astronauts these were people going up in untested untried territory um, true pioneers. When you think of that piece of junk we landed on the moon and the fact that it took off again when yeah. they came so back alive. was amazing. Today, it, we can send somebody to the moon. It's just a matter of us building the, uh, the hardware because, uh, I mean, uh, Bezos has got a rocket now. It's a big, huge rocket that can land on the moon rather than that small little but moon lunar ba lander. Bez Alex, Bezos's rocket was able to touch back down after it separated from the capsule, and and it didn't crash, so it's reusable. No, Whereas I know that a lot of the stuff with NASA uh, wasn't it wasn't reusable well, it wasn't until reusable. they started. Well, with they the were shuttle. reusable, but they ditched them in the ocean, and then if they could find them, they went out and got them and brought them back and reused them. Yeah, SpaceX uh, has been doing that for a while. Too. SpaceX has it, actually been landing the thing, you know, on a barge in the ocean. 
Well, no, they also yeah. do it on. Uh, they come, on, they on come on the back ground. to Texas yeah, as well. But it's much harder, I would think, to land it on a barge in the ocean yeah. than yeah. it would be to land it on land. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, they when they bring it back on land, it comes back pretty much where it took off, you know. And and uh, it, the, that whole part of it has been pioneered by uh, by uh, Elon Musk and his company in SpaceX. Uh, it's just that what they did today should not be mistaken for true space travel. And if we we're going to put our money anywhere, it should be in with uh, with Musk, who now has a rocket that pretty much can go to the moon. Huge rocket. Land on the moon, this huge rocket. And bring with it a bunch of materials and so on to build a base up there. Now, so, now didn't he send a rocket up into space with a Tesla in it? Uh, yeah, one of the early yeah. Teslas. That was his one of um, his early rockets. He had a Tesla in the nose of the plane, and he's still traveling out there. Rocket? What? Oh, it's it, it's just it's it's still, it's, uh, it's, it's going out to the edge of uh, the of the solar system. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that little guy, that little dummy inside the Tesla is still flying in that thing. So yeah, I wonder if that Tesla will be under warranty with all those miles. Uh, yeah, right. I wonder <laughs> if the batteries still work. Uh, yeah. No, but I mean, um, I think that what SpaceX is doing is valuable and is going to make life better for everybody here eventually. I think what uh, I think what Bezos did today was say, "See, I can send a rocket up." That's basically what he did. He wanted his bragging rights, but his bragging rights compared to what SpaceX has done. I mean, they've so- sent up a total of, I think, yeah, six several. six people so far. Yeah. In uh, in those spacesuits that were designed by a guy who makes spacesuits for movies, mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, the thing about Bezos is he never uh, said that he was going to go to the moon or any place like that. What he wanted to do was bring travel like this to the masses. Yeah, but what is and what is the use? The rich masses only. Yeah, but what is the use of that travel? At, at the moment, at the moment, it was, you had to be one of the rich masses to take a plane in 1903. <laughs> Well you, know. well, you have to sit on the wing. Uh, the, the, the point is that I think that what's terrible about what they're doing is that what he's doing with Blue Horizon really has no function as a space entity. That it is all, he's only using it for like, it's an amusement ride. That's what exactly. he's thinking of it as. But he's thinking of it as an amusement ride and not as something of scientific progress. You know, and it's really well, not. Doing what he yeah, did today was no big deal. The only big uh, deal is is that a, bil- a billionaire got into it and flew with Well, it. who else can afford to do that? Well, I mean, that's that's true. But nevertheless, I, I just don't... I, if he's going to use this for some kind of amusement uh, ride, I, you know, I, I don't approve of it. I don't. Can you imagine if... Both he and his brother, uh, forget about the other two passengers, if something happened and and the capsule blew up or uh, crashed. Well, we'd be cheering tonight. But, uh, (laughs) you know, I mean, let's face it, Bezos is not one of the nicest people in America. So uh, I don't know that I was rooting for him. Okay. Yeah. But all I'm saying is is that, that, you know, I mean, this is not a party trick. All right? This is serious business, and you got to take it seriously. SpaceX is taking it seriously. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Who did the flight last week? Uh, uh, Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic. Uh, Branson. Yeah, Branson, Branson just yeah. wanted it because it, all that was was a plane, okay, mm-hmm. with I a rocket it. on it. Huh? Yeah. What were you? There's saying? a glider. A glider with a rocket on a it. Glider with a rocket on it. Hey, yeah. w- when you were a kid. You wanted to play with rockets, right? I would have. I, I wanted to go to the moon. I wanted right. to be well, the first man on the moon. Well, these three guys. And most of my friends are, agreed with me. What? Are wealthy. These three guys are wealthy enough to play with rockets that they can ride on. Well, but, and, but you know, uh, 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 forget about wealthy. I mean, you're talking about Bezos, who is the richest man in the world. You're talking about Branson, mm-hmm. who is somewhat rich. All he can afford is a glider, you know. <laughs> But, but he owned but, his own Caribbean island. Yeah, but, but what? So did uh, Bron- uh, uh, not Bronstein. Uh, who was the guy that died in jail? Uh, Jeffrey Weinstein. Uh, 
Jeffrey, Jeffrey Wong. Yeah. He, yeah, he had his own island too. Yeah, but uh, the, the um, uh, and and uh, Elon Musk, Epstein. it really Epstein, is Epstein. Elon Musk is a billionaire, but just just barely. You know, it's not like he comes into that big club. He's not up there with with Bezos and Gates and you know, mm -hmm. the Sage of Omaha. What's his name? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Warren uh, Buffett. Uh, Warren Buffett. Buffett. Yeah. And, and uh, I wonder if uh, Trump is going to uh, want to have a rocket now. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting start, for that he'll start, one. He'll sell timeshares in it. Yeah. 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 Well, no, he'll yeah. he'll sell stock in it and then never build it. That's what he'll do. Yeah, uh, fair enough. No, but it, it it's really you know I I just think that. It is. I think it's wonderful that we have business involved in building these things, and that there that what what uh, SpaceX has done is create it uh, an inexpensive transport. I mean, you got to realize he's doing that stuff really on the cheap. He, and he, it's because it's reusable. Well, it's reusable. That's the one of the main reasons it's so cheap. But I mean, he's got. I don't know if you've seen the the. Uh, uh, Musk, Musk's, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, base down there in Texas, but he he's got them lined up, uh, 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 just one at a time. And they just take them and lift them and put them together and blast them off. Every I'm, I go to YouTube, go to YouTube. Almost every other day, there's another SpaceX uh, takeoff. They sent up a, a Sirius XM satellite the other day. You know, it's about time. They, they set up a thing. I don't know if you've seen this, but they send up satellites. And what they do is they attach them to the side of the rocket. All right. And then when they get up there and they have video of all of this, so you can see it happening. They spit them out. Have you seen this, uh, Jeff? You yeah. look like you're yeah. nodding. Yeah, they spit them out. It's amazing. I mean, that's a functional product. Yeah, but I mean, he's got a real business going there. He's got yeah. a real oh, yeah. going space concern, as it were. Oh, I think, I think a lot of these things are yeah. just experimental stuff yeah. that people are doing because yeah. they want to try. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who said oh? It's a toy. Who said oh? If you really want to say it. Somebody said oh. Uh, I, I, I was just going to mention something else other than uh, the, the rockets. Is uh, I saw a movie on the way out uh, to Denver, and uh, you, you remember uh, the Better Call Saul guy, Bob Oberlink? Oh, oh. Odenkirk. Um, Odenkirk. Oh, is that it? <laughs> Bob okay. Odenkirk. O Odenkirk. Uh, he did a movie called Nobody. Has anybody yeah, seen yeah. that? Oh yeah, it's been out. A while. I want to see it. I haven't it's seen it. Uh, I enjoyed it. I mean, I you know. No, it, it was it, good. It, it was good. It was a good. It was a good. You know movie. what I saw that I watched that I like really liked, and then I went and watched the original, the uh, the first picture they did of it. Watch the uh, uh, the. I got to get this right. The hitman's body, uh, hitman's body wife's guard. bodyguard. Yeah, I never heard of that. Very yeah. funny, and they had another film about. 2017, which I just watched tonight, called the uh, the Hitman's Bodyguard, yeah. and, and they're both very funny, very mm. funny. If you get a chance to watch them, they're very good. Yeah, but uh, you know, I guess there's no more Better Call Saul. So uh, yeah, no, there's a, there, there is. Oh, there's going to be another there's one uh, season uh, left. Season. Yeah, one, one, one more se season. One more season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. You know, it's, I, I, you know, I wanted more of that. Oh, Speaking yeah. of the last season, I'm, I'm I just finished the uh, last season of Bosch. You guys. Oh, that? that was good. I you know, Shecky, that. my friend Shecky, loves Bosch. I, yeah, yeah, I like Bosch. And I tried to get into it, and I couldn't. They're going to do a sequel, and it's going to be after he has left the LAPD and become a private investigator. Oh, really? There are, wow. There are some Michael Conley books about that, where Bosch is a private investigator, and they're going to they're going to do a series, uh, a subsequent series with. Titus Welliver playing the lead, of course. I never watched it. I, I, hey, I tried to watch one episode and it kind of bored me. Oh but. no, it was it was it was good. Uh, it was, it's it, and Yellowstone is good too, and there's going to be another season of that. But Vernon, what did you think uh, on Bosch of his uh, tube Macintosh uh, amplifier? Uh, I, I would think that you would get a kick out of that. Oh yeah, I mean, 
there's 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 no substitution for a good analog amplifier. No substitution. Right. I yeah. remember those Macintoshes when I was a kid. I and I couldn't afford it, but those uh, things I, blew out sound. Well, that, that house that house yeah. that he lives in too. That's an oh, actual yeah. house. Oh. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, and with and, a view. and suppose, supposedly he could afford that because he was involved in some kind of a, a storyline that a movie picked up and they paid him as a consultant when they produced the movie and the money that he made off of that consultation allowed him to buy that house yeah very nice and uh you know alan had a macintosh uh, a 275 i think that one when was we talk, like folks let me let something. me just say this for people who don't know what we're talking about when, when we say macintosh we don't mean apple okay right. now, these were amplifiers that I think I first saw in the 50s. <clears throat> Easily. Yeah. And yeah. the name and, and, of the company that made them. Right. And, and they, they were tubes, tubes. And when these things lit up, you could yeah. roast marshmallows on them. I mean, <laughs> it was it was powerful. Have you ever seen them, Brian? Yeah, we, we, had a, we had a company when I worked at a small company uh, real close to here. The company across the street there uh, we would go over there every once in a while because those guys used to rebuild them with those real tubes in them. Yeah. And they used to play for us sometimes. And, oh, my God, the sound you would think the band is right in front of you. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I have uh, – I uh, Alan has a Macintosh that he bought and wasn't using. And, and I tried to buy it from him, and then he found out that it was worth a lot more than I offered him. Because uh, actually, I didn't even offer him any, uh, anything. Well, what I kind of Mac? Get are you, are you talking uh, about Macintosh was a, ampl was, amplifier? Yeah, oh, it was okay. a yeah two seventy five model. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, he paid the guy five hundred dollars to put in new tubes, and these tubes light up like orange and clean it up. Where do and you buy tubes, and how expensive are they? I, I, I don't know. He paid, wait a minute. He hold that, on a second, yeah. Vernon. You should have an answer to that one. Russia. Really? <laughs> really? Most uh, high-powered vacuum tubes now are made in Russia. Wow. wow. Do you know who invented the vacuum tube? Quick. No. Uh, uh, um, Hoover? Lee DeForest. <laughs> oh. Who was Lee DeForest's nephew? I don't know. Calvert that DeForest. Who was, uh, what's his name on the uh, Letterman show? Larry Bud Melman. Oh, really? Yeah. There's a little trivia for you. Hey, before we get away, did you guys see uh, Fauci put uh, Rand Paul oh, in place? Oh, it was today? beautiful. It was I beautiful. thought it was the other way around. No, no, no. It was Fauci. <laughs> Fauci told Rand Paul, sir, you do not know what you're talking about. Yes. He, 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 he told said him something he, about not being a liar. No, he said if you're going to talk about people being a liar, you should start with you. Basically. You're the liar. Right. Basically, he told him to. Take it, fold it five ways, and put it where I've the sun don't shine. I've never seen Fauci shine. get so hot like that. I think Fauci's he was, gotten tired he was of angry. I, well, I think he's gotten tired of going before that committee and always having Rand Paul start going in on one of his stupid rants, you know. And I think he's just decided not to put up with it anymore. Yeah. This this is Alan's uh, Macintosh. Oh with wow! The new, yeah. Wow. Well, there's the theme. Hey, uh, uh, to begin with, thank you, Phil. We really appreciate oh, my you pleasure. sticking around here. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you to Ber Vernon Nunn, who was the first one waiting to go on and uh, is known as Ann Nunn. Oh, no, you have it there as Vernon Nunn. Right? No, I changed it. She, oh. uses a, she uses this computer to do Zoom meetings for her volunteer work. And so yeah. when, she, when she logs into Zoom, it puts her name up there. Yeah, whatever the wife wants. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, uh, we, yes, dear, you're right. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. Great having you here tonight. Brian, always good having you here. John Larkin, uh, take your ramp down to the uh, t t train station and see if you can get a couple of pennies. And, well, I feel like I can practice down there. It sounds really good down there. Oh, okay. Hey, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and we'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Thank them all for being here. Very nice conversation. Very sweet and nice and mellow. That's the way it should be. Anyway, uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. Okay. Please give him a call, will you? If you're listening, please give him a call. He sometimes gets to feel a little lonely. Um, 
give him a call and uh, he's using Skype and it's GabNet Live that you use. Just call him on Skype and type in GabNet Live and it'll take you right there. Uh, we're back again uh, tomorrow night right after uh, the sports show goes on at 8.30. We're here at 10.30 Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, as I like to say, if you see her, tell her I love her. And on top of everything else, please, if you aren't vaccinated, Join the rest of us, okay? Get with the program.